It's time to pick a side. The border war is on the air with PG and Ten. Gang, welcome back into another week of the Border War. BG and Tan Man finally back in studio. Welcome to episode 148. BG, I, I'm, I'm happy to see you, man. We've talked on the phone. We haven't done episodes. I'm happy to be back in the studio. Even more happy about the, the show rundown we've got here because it's loaded. It, it's It's got a lot of exciting topics with lots of rainbows and unicorns. Let's get started. <laughs> You can follow us on Twitter at The Border War. You can follow this ball of sunshine sitting to my right at BG underscore Border War. I am at Tar Heel Tan Man. BG, we'll start at the top of this episode. Uh, the college football playoff rankings. We discussed them last just, week. To be fair, for the week, we've kicked the whole NFL out of the box, right? I, uh, well, I didn't know if maybe you wanted to hop on some point later this week and... Discuss some other things. They I did, they like did announce was, was, today. We had, a lot to, we had a lot to get in the box. They did announce so. today that Haskins is going to start for the rest of the season. Well, what, a, what, a, what a shock it until, took so long. Until next week. Yeah, that's true. But uh, we'll start. This is mainly a college football episode. We're going to start with the college football playoffs. Uh, last week we discussed the rankings after they came out. Uh, you know, discuss where we had some teams going. Uh, We're and, doing it on Wednesday last week, so so we caught right. it on the day after. Um, I think we know what it's going to say, though. I, I think so too. But the, this past weekend, we had a lot of uh, a lot of games to affect that, uh, including the game I asked tomorrow. you about last week, Minnesota taking yeah. out Penn State. I had a buddy Friday night. I was talking to him, and he said, "I think Minnesota's going to get Penn State." I said, "Nah, man." I, he's like, "Oh man," he, you know, he gave me all the reasons. I said, Minnesota, I said, they haven't beaten anybody. I said, they beat up Sisters of the Poor, and then the bottom of the Big Ten, I said, Penn State's going to hand them their tail over on Saturday. Uh, yeah. Wrong. Well, I mean, that's the problem with having, you know, you're right, they hadn't played anybody, but that doesn't tell you how good they are. Um, well, it, didn't, it certainly didn't tell you how good they were Saturday. Uh, J- James Franklin, to me, I, I really think that narrative kind of is locked in now. He is just that coach. I mean, he's going to get you in the conversation, and, and you're going to have uh, a really good start to just about every year. But it seems like every year Penn State is right there and then just loses something like this. Um, and that's it for them. I mean that, 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 that yeah, I really do. Unless they were somehow able um, to win that conference, I just I think the Big Ten's getting one team, and I look. Well, yeah, the Big Ten's going to get one team, but I don't think that's necessarily it for Penn State. I mean, they could still be that one team. That's what I guess I'm saying. Yeah. I, I don't think they're going to be. Yeah, I, I just look, man. Maybe Ohio State is not. I haven't watched anything but highlights. But uh, Ooh. they are. I mean, they're really, really beating teams bad. And I, I get that Clemson is too, but there's just something about well, I, the I, number of points they've been scoring since week one in the first quarter of a game even. I mean, they just we'll, – We'll talk about, about this in a few minutes when we talk about Clemson. But I think one thing the committee did last week, and I, I think I heard someone on ESPN, Heather Dennis or somebody, she made the point, listen – by putting Ohio State at the top of the rankings last week, they sent a message to the rest of the college football world that it's not only who you beat, but it's how you go about it. And it's how many points you're beating teams by. Right. Because Ohio State, it seems like every week they're beating somebody 50-7. to 7. This past week it was Maryland 73-14. to 14. I mean, that's, that's a video game score. Yeah, really. That is, is a video game score. Uh, Ohio State is... Uh, even even with the LSU win over Alabama, I would still be fine if they left Ohio State at number one. No, I agree. I don't think they will. I don't think so either. But I, I, I would be perfectly fine if they left Ohio State and LSU 1-2 just like they were. Yeah, I, I think what we'll get uh, is – well, do you want to go that far or are we, or are we just uh, still kind of – No, we can go you – know, Well, I, I, think, I think that, uh, that LSU is going to be one. I think Ohio I State will be two. I think Clemson's going to be in at three. Okay. And I think Alabama stays in the top four at four because when you look, they're not putting Minnesota there. 
Not, that not. they're not going to put Minnesota. They're not jumping that far up. Um, and I don't see how you can put Georgia in ahead of Clemson at this point. Uh, I, I think it has to be Clemson at three. And, and, and then, I'm sorry, not over Clemson, over Alabama. And then, you know, Alabama saved themselves a spot, I think, by, by almost coming back and winning that game. Um, early on, they were on the, the first verge, half. They were on the they, verge of being out of this. They thing were going to be out of the conversation, absolutely, because their schedule was going to hurt them at that point. But they came back and gave LSU everything they wanted. Um, so I think they stay in. But I think it's almost less of a vote for Bama and just not an ability to put anybody else in yet. But but that's just for this week. That could that could expire. I say this. I wouldn't be surprised to see Alabama at four this week, but I don't know that they can go any higher. No, oh, I agree. Like, I agree. When, I you, agree. when you project the season out and you look at the teams that you know, would theoretically be behind them in that situation, you know, the George George is going to have an opportunity to come up. Like three of the spots, I think are spoken for. I think a one loss Big Ten, even a one loss Big Ten team. Be it Ohio State, be it Penn State, or even perhaps an undefeated Minnesota team. By you know, heaven, you know, if if everything goes haywire, like I think the Big Ten gets a team, we know the SEC gets a team, and Clemson's going to win the ACC. Running away from here on out, they're going to get it. So that leaves you one spot, right? I think they're going to put Alabama at four tomorrow night, with the understanding like this is it. And going forward, when you look at Oregon. Absolutely, who, yeah. yeah. Who who is maybe looking at a at a one loss versus one loss showdown with Utah in the Pac-12 title game? I think the committee in the past has shown us that. Listen, they really like a one loss conference champion in Oklahoma. If that happens going forward, that means they would have beaten Baylor twice. I just think there's a, there's a lot of things that has has to happen. Like Alabama's not out now, but there's a lot of stuff that's got to happen between. Between now and you know, within the next three weeks, when these things finally three weeks to a month, when they finally get settled, and I mean, whether what I mean, you know, that Georgia game that, that seems to be looming, uh, you know, I mean, that's I think that's going to be a tough, tough bill the way that Alabama looks Saturday. I well, mean, well, the, the, their defense Alabama. suddenly you go back and think about that South Carolina game, and you think, okay, maybe maybe they're just not that great. Um, I think they're not getting Georgia now. Though. That's going to be LSU's battle to fight now. That's a good point. Yeah, That's LSU, a good LSU point. To hey, me, you know what? I, it, it didn't even occur to me that that game would have meant something because I'm like, I thought Alabama just – I thought they had to play for the SEC. I thought that was a state law That's, or a, that's a rule. Yeah, yeah. Now, I, I would be interested to see last week of the season they play Auburn. I, I don't know what, I, I don't know if it's, it's where it's at, but they play Auburn. If they blow Auburn out – and then it comes down to okay, that you know, that would be it for them. They'd be at the house the next week. How impressive would Oregon have to look in that Pac-12 title game? Given that they have already lost to Auburn, you know, it was way back the first week of the season. But it, but it happened. But it, but it happened. How, how you know? Would that be enough to put Alabama in? I guess I'm asking. And, and, and to does, me, I wouldn't if, because if you preach. Conference champions, conference champions. Uh, if for some reason Gus Malzahn's about to lose his job, and and it's kind of known at that point, and is that still a thing? Yeah, it's still a really? thing, man. It's it, there, there's a lot of people talking about hiring him away from Auburn. I don't get it. Um, I you know we we can talk about that another time. I mean, there's a lot of delusion about. Uh, Fixing things with a new head coach, <clears throat> um, but uh, you, if that's a thing and that's a distraction or whatever, and Alabama does blow Auburn out, I, I mean, I wonder what Auburn's resume looks like at that point. Feels like the shine's worn off of that a little bit from earlier in the season. Um, I, you know, this is going to be one of those years where people yell that we should have had more than four teams. Most years. Most years four That's, seems about right. Most years we, four seems too many. <laughs> I was just saying, it seems like the last uh, four years. I think two would have been sufficient. Um, but I, you know, I, I I still think though that um, it's it's become a very strange sport. 
in that you and I complain about this, but here we are feeding right into it, man. There's just so much college football out there, so much, 99% of it that just doesn't freaking matter, man. It just doesn't count for anything. Like the rest of us are just out there flailing in the wind and losing to Sunbelt teams, building multi-million dollar facilities. But, well, I mean, but but let's say we had beaten that Sunbelt team. Let's say we had beaten you guys and the Sunbelt team. In the really long run, man, I mean, there's just a lot of teams in the middle yeah. that are just kind of doing their thing. Um, and I just think it's – We've gotten to a point where college football is all about this Final Four, but it's crazy because they come from different conferences. They have different schedules. They, they don't share a lot of even common opponents so that when they do, like we're talking about with Auburn beating Oregon, we're like, we, you know, we microanalyze like every quarter of that game, but it's just one game. Yeah, I, I... Before we move on to Clemson, I'll just say I think that that was one of the unintended consequences of this playoff thing that I don't think anybody really thought of. Everybody thought, well, you know, it'll make the regular season this much more interesting, et cetera, et cetera. Uh-uh. And it really has. I mean, to me, I think it's kind of had the opposite effect because if you're not one it's of these, made certain you know, handful games of teams more thing, interesting. Yeah. Like that Alabama-LSU game obviously was huge because it felt like this was, know, a play, yeah, final it was a playoff game. Yeah, game. yeah it really did, but – well, for, for, not, not for most of us. No. Well, for Clemson, uh, they had no such tight, close ball game Saturday. Uh, they mauled the Wolfpack 55-10. to 10. Uh, We are not here to talk about how they got to – well, I guess we are. We're not here to talk about the 55-10, to 10, what it means or anything. We all know what this means. What I wanted to ask you is I saw a lot of blowback this weekend from – Non-Clemson fans, mostly South Carolina fans. Do you have a problem as a South Carolina fan with, uh, you know, I guess for lack of a better term, Dabo Sweeney's uh, game plan? No, Saturday. No, he he has to beat people badly. Exactly. I, well, I mean, the, look, the, the I, committee told you we want to see how bad I, you beat people. How many how many balls uh, did Clemson's offense get to play with in this game? Just one, as far as I know. Did they have the same number of players as NC State? Mm. 11 on 11? Sounds about right. Tackle the ball with the guy with the ball, man. I mean, I I don't know. I mean, like, look, sort of like you tweeted out the other day, I don't like Dabo. I've never made any bones about that. I, I, he, he gets under my skin in a way that he didn't actually used to, uh, but he does now. Um, something, and, something about two national championships will do that. It was before that. It was before they got this. It was when we were still beating them. He really started to bother me. But, um, no, this is – look, that's the game they're playing. They're trying to win a national title. Um, I Look, what I think is – what concerns me about it is that they're able to beat NC State 55-10, to 10, that they can do this to a conference opponent, that a conference opponent with a, you know, a a – Fairly, it's a football school uh, that that you can turn they, them into. They want to pretend they're a basketball school, but they're really not. Well, but but my point is, you can take a game with a conference opponent in November and treat it like you're playing Charleston Southern, and it gets back to what I'm talking about, man. I just I find the lack of parity in college football right now to be very disturbing. And I think it's not a good look for the long-term health of the sport. Um, I I just don't understand. If you're a North Carolina State fan, like what is it you're excited about for next year after you know that this is what is happening? And there's nothing you can do about it. Nothing you can do about it. Clemson, the the story with Clemson for the last, you know, Six weeks, whatever it's been since they played North Carolina, they have uh, they they have hung this North Carolina game over the top of their head, and the fact that they did not beat North Carolina by sixty as this dangling thing, like, well, we don't quite know about Clemson, we don't know if they're really good enough. Look what they did against North Carolina. Well, we were saying the same thing. And this was a uh, Saturday was a message. The scoring that last touchdown with the backups in that was a message. To everybody in college football around them, that listen, they are still until you know, until you beat them, until you knock them off, they are still one of the top dogs in the country. No matter how many tight games they play, like nobody else. And, and I, I, 
I feel dirty. I feel like I need a shower for doing all this Clemson defending. But, like, nobody else gets held to this standard that Clemson does. Like, they can't have no, I saw a, 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 just an okay week without getting hammered. It's not fair. I it's saw fair. I saw a poll today. Um, I think it was ESPN. It was, I mean, so you, you got to think there were hundreds and hundreds of thousands mm-hmm. of votes. Uh, and it had about six teams listed. Who wins the national title? And I think Clemson had 6%. And I'm like, you clowns are out of your mind. I, if if I'm wow. betting on one team to win a national title this year with real money, it's Clemson. I, 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 I think – they probably have the most talent of anybody in the country. See, I don't but, know. But I'll I don't say this. Go that far. But we were right earlier in the season. They didn't look good. And yep. they didn't look good week after week after week. So if you're a Clemson fan thinking that we're changing our tune on this show, no. No. Now you look good, but you did not. I Trevor did. Lawrence looked awful for quarters at a time. I mean, like – multiple games. No, they're, 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 they're hitting a stride right now, and it's a scary thing to to watch. Yeah. It's, it's a, I wouldn't say that I would put my money on them to win. Like, I think I would still, if I've got a stack of money, right, I, I think I would still put it on Ohio State, assuming that Chase Young gets cleared and all that. Part of me can't no. get past what I saw the last time those two schools played. Yeah, but that's a and different know, team, man. man. That, I know. Th- that's and, a different Ohio and State what team. I wonder about Ohio State, too, is this is a this is an a, a Ohio State team with Urban Meyer talent but without the Urban Meyer taint. He is not in that locker room. And, and you do have a feeling about this Ohio State team that – they don't seem like the most hated program in the United States right now, like they no. have been for no. the past 10 years. No. I, I haven't heard a lot of that stuff. We, we, I was actually texting a friend this morning, and I, I said, I, Ohio State winning a national championship would be preferable to me to Clemson winning oh, dear another God, one. Like, yes. that's, you know, that's the two that's not college football teams that I can't stand the most, and I would rather have Ohio State win it. No, I mean, I think for me it's probably Clemson and North Carolina, but that's really just because of you. If you guys won a national what championship. Did, what did we do? If you, no, you. You. Me. You as a person. You me. The man, what did I do? If you won a national title in football, oh I would gosh. never come back in this room again. I just would – I'd probably quit my job because you would know where to find me if I didn't. I would change my name to Giuseppe – Something Gene. I would, I would move. Yes, Gene. <laughs> Me, I would take my new genus and we would move to someplace in New Mexico, like Clovis, that you've never heard of. That's what I would. That's what so I would. Now, let's say we're sitting here two years from now. In and- all seriousness, though, I think it has to be Clemson and Georgia for me. I don't want to yeah. see Georgia win a national title. I don't. Yeah. I don't want to listen to that mess. I don't. So I kinda, I've always kind of liked Georgia. Well, shut up. Kind of like Georgia. How about that? But How about no, that? I, Ohio State winning it to me. But I would. I, I think if I had the stacks of money, I would probably go Ohio State, and I would probably go LSU because I think they have been super, super impressive. You know, letting Alabama – they didn't, they didn't let Alabama back. Listen, Alabama was fully capable of sure. getting back into that game Saturday all by themselves. And they – every time that – LSU could have folded, and they come back. And, you know, Alabama cuts it to six, I think, and they come right back down the field, scored again. Alabama hits the long touchdown pass. Get the I mean, every time that they could have backtracked, they stood up and traded punches. I think I would probably go LSU, but Clemson is a very, very close third, and six percent seems outrageous to me. Well, it's just it's it crazy. shows you how affected everybody is by the narratives that that. We get, you know, I mean, it, it, a lot of sports fans, a lot of people in the United States just seem to sort of be sheep. I mean, and that's sort of been the narrative. Um, Clemson, Clemson isn't very good this year. Well, mm, they look pretty no, good right they, now. They, they, they look like their old selves right now. Uh, old selves, new selves, young selves, I don't care. Well, I don't know what you want to call what happened down in Columbia Saturday night to your Gamecocks. They fall to App State 20-16 to and BG, that old topic. You, you remember a couple years ago when we started the show, when we talked about the Charlotte Hornets, there was one topic that just kind of hung over everything. Right? It was Kemba Walker's free yeah. agent. Wasn't it? And that was, that was the storyline. Sure. Right? I think we're there 
with the Will Mullen. Like I think the Georgia job-saving win, you asked a couple weeks ago, where do we see this program what do you two years from now? So he's probably the coach. Now I don't know, man. I think that is picking up some steam. Do you remember the, the, the week um, – that we did the show after Georgia. Uh-huh. Uh, I remember you sort of kept fishing, trying to get me to say that it was this huge win. And I, and I really, I just kind of said, look, I don't know if this is a huge win. Because oh. I had no faith that it was going to actually mean anything in the long run. And unfortunately, my fears were correct. Um, this is not... It could still be a huge win with, you know, you just haven't followed that up with well the necessary steps to maintain but, but see, that. That's the way I think, though. In college football, with recruiting, with the way things work, that's what makes something a huge win. If it can turn into even more success. Uh, I, I, I'm at the point where, look, you can name eight games – that South Carolina should have won since Will Muschamp was hired at head coach, that they haven't won. Um, the, the only really impressive win, I mean, even if you go back to the Georgia game and actually watch the game from a football standpoint, um, we scored one offensive touchdown in that game. Georgia was just awful. They were, they were bad. We threw, they threw they a pick bad. six. They handed us everything they could, and it still went down to a double overtime game. And, yeah, you take that. But the Kentucky game is the only legit football win over a football team that we've got this year. Really. Yeah. I mean, that's it. You've got Kentucky. Um, and and, and it, I was very optimistic about the program after that Kentucky win because I told you, I said, all right, man, that's two games in a row. One You won that you shouldn't have won, and now you finally beat somebody you should have beaten. Um, but then, you know, you follow that up with, with the loss at – you know, to Florida, then you, you follow that up with a complete butt-kicking by Tennessee. Um, and, again, look, App State looked like the only team that particularly cared about being on the field. I mean, they, these guys are – I know they work hard. I, I read too much stuff from former players. But this injury thing, it's not an excuse to me. But what it is is an indictment of this coaching regime – because this stuff happens every year. And Mason Zandy, a former offensive lineman, tweets out, he said, this is not soft players. This is a coaching staff that's killing these guys in practice. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and that is what's going on with these injuries. Um, and then just the inability. Like, tell me, I don't care what you say, man. We could not run the football. Well, no, we couldn't I, run we, the football we, we, against that. You look at the stats. Rico, that's it. Rico Dowdle. 14 carries, 9 yards. Like, I – yeah. listen, I'm 36 years old. I'm probably 60 pounds overweight, and I feel like – not saying I could, but I feel like I could get 9 yards, right? Yeah. I mean, that's, that's literally nothing. You take, if you just – if you just – if I had directly to, into your right guard's back – I should get a yard every time, forward, right? Right. But uh, Ab State is a team – I don't mean to to give you a lot because listen, they beat they they beat our tails uh, up in Chapel Hill a couple of weeks ago too. All right, They're, that's a good football team, but for them to dominate South Carolina on both sides of the ball, it's one thing to yeah. We didn't we didn't have any injuries on that defensive no, front, did we? It's one thing to to beat North Carolina because we know what North Carolina has been the last couple of years, right? We know what they they, they they haven't been very good. We know that depth is an issue in Chapel Hill. Absolutely. That's not a big story. That is a, a little more believable. But to go down to South Carolina to an SEC team night game night game in their place a game they, they a game they did not the, should not have been possible to overlook no. because they needed this win. The, the, the stadium was not completely full, but there was a good enough crowd there for the first half at least. No, and no. I, after the first half, they started making some comments about how folks left and that kind of thing. But to go down there and just flat whip South Carolina on both sides of the ball is absolutely inexcusable. And I, I, I made a note this morning – I was listening to, uh, and I've come to really enjoy listening to these things because they, to me, they just bring so much laughter. The Will Muschamp press conference, and I, you know, to your point, the former player uh, talking about the injuries, and to me, watching that, and I get it was directly after the game, 
and I know that had to be a, a tough pill to swallow for Muschamp. One, he looks like a guy that is just out of answers. Yeah. Watching him on the sideline Saturday night, he just – he's sitting there with his headset with his glasses on his nose and his hood. Like, he just – he, he looks like he's he, he's done. Like he, he doesn't know what else to do. But two, well, and the reason he doesn't know what else to do is because this is who he is. Right. And two, I, I made a note. It seemed like you know, I think one of the reporters asked him a question about you know guys dropping passes and things. And anytime anyone asked a question like that, the answer was always, "Well, we got to work harder. We got to practice harder." No, but on gotta, that one, he threw the players under the bus. Yeah, we we, we got to do we got to do all this. His answer was always back to, "We got to work. We got to work. We got to do more work. Yeah. We got to do more work." It wasn't ever, you know, it wasn't ever any taking response. It was just we're gonna. To me, I got the sense that we're gonna grind these guys into the ground, which is exactly what you said. Uh, the former player that was his observation as well. So I just, well, I mean, I, I, don't I know. always it's, suspected it's, it's that Must Champ. Uh, is one of those guys that responds to things not going well by doubling down and working harder Bingo. at That's the it. stuff, working harder at the stuff that isn't working already. Um, and I'll say this: I don't think that uh, I don't think South Carolina football players, and I don't mean because they're losing. I mean from the beginning. I don't think there's a lot of fun on this team. I don't think this no. is a fun coaching staff. No. And that isn't the most important thing. Um, but That's part of it, though. But the, listen, the players have to enjoy coming there. The fans have to enjoy. They have to want to come. But I don't think there's any of that let, in you guys' program right let, now. Let me say this. and, and, and it, Look, I said, what, this time last year, Muschamp would get two more years, but I knew he wasn't the answer. You remember that? Yeah. And, I, and that's still what's going to happen. All these people that think he's going to be fired at the end of this year, barring something really odd, I don't see it. Now, I, think, I think I think, I think we're there in may that be territory now, though, man. I think we might. Well, I told you before the season started. You asked me what the basement prediction for this team was, and I told you four and eight. I said this team might only win four games it, because I knew if things broke the wrong way a couple of times that we would not hang in there. But here's the thing I want to say about Muschamp. Um, if you look at the other stuff, and you can say the same thing about his his tenure in Florida, he does a lot of things well, right? South Carolina, rightly or wrongly, has always had a reputation for having players that got in trouble, right? Mm-hmm. Who, when Lou Holtz was there, particularly Demetrius Summers, I mean, oh, my gosh. God, that people would do whatever they wanted. There were incidences. Uh, in the Holtz regime, right before Spurrier was hired, of, of, of fellow players, Mo Thompson, stealing from fellow players out of their locker rooms. Seville Newton threatening to fight fans in the basketball stands. Right. Right. So, well, that was you. But that happened. Um, yeah, I, I, I know. And now he wants to be our next head coach. But that's a different, <laughs> that's a different conversation. Um, but Muschamp, much like he cleaned up the mess that, that was left at Florida with – Lord, murderers on on the football team. He's cleaned up South Carolina's football team. South Carolina's football team uh, is full of a bunch of respectful, well-spoken guys that go to class and make good grades and stay out of trouble until they get on the football field. They're, they're just and not, then once they not get on very the good, fo- not a very well, good not only that, team. but they don't have any discipline on the football field. Then they turn in a loud mouth. We're down by two touchdowns, but I'm going to showboat because I made a tackle. For only eight yards. And I don't understand where that stuff comes from. And I just think that what he can't do, and you've talked about it, he can't drive the culture. He is not a CEO. And in today's college football, you have to have that. What is he? He's a defensive coordinator, man. He is like the defensive coordinator that you would want above all others. And and that's it. That's all he is. And I think I, – I, I don't know what I think. I think that, that you're going to get new coordinators. I think that at the very least, surely he can't bring Brian, Brian McClendon back as a play caller. That doesn't mean that he loses his job as wide receivers coach, but you cannot bring him back as a play caller after this ridiculous two-year stretch of watching. It looks like Tech Mobile. It's like we've got four plays. 
And we can only pick one of those four. And the only time it works is when we, when we, when we, I'm sorry, let me, I don't want to trigger you. Paper, rock, scissors our way. That's wrong. Into, and, what is it? it? What'd you say? Paper, rock, scissors? Oh, no, 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 that's right. I'm sorry. Well, I, I thought, you, no, it I, is wrong. I thought you were, I thought you were trying to, I thought you were trying to be funny. And, no, and I was trying to I, not I make it a topic, but else. clearly I failed. That just poops right over yeah, the top of yes, my head. I'm did. sorry. Go ahead. But, but you remember Tech Mobile, man. If you, if you called the right pass play and the defense called the wrong run play, you were going to get yardage. And that's all South Carolina's offense feels like right now. Feels like a jumbled mass of plays that we've practiced, but they're not a system. They don't work together. They don't – I mean, as soon as DeCarion Joyner comes onto the field, can't we, you tell we, me we what's going to happen? Know what they're going to do. And why are we throwing to, to two quarterbacks when we have wide receivers on the roster? What happened to the guys we recruited at wide receiver? And don't hand me this App State stuff either. If those guys are so good, why didn't we offer any of them? Well, you did. One. There's one team player on that yeah. whole team. One. Uh-huh. That we and then, a, then you pulled his offer when he got a little banged up. Okay, that's fine. That's why he was motivated. What I'm talking about is why were the rest of these guys able to whip you one-on-one? If they're that good, then they should be on your team. That's not an excuse. Uh, look. Anytime you have a team... Like you said, there is no excuse. Yeah, anytime you have a team like Ab State, where I think they said, what, 54 50%, 56% of the players in their roster come from North Carolina or South Carolina, yeah. what do you think the two biggest games on their schedule were? Right. It's because well, most of those kids well, didn't get an offer from either one of those places. Some guy right? on the Gamecock message board I, I, I post on goes back today and finds his thread... And I'm wanting to say it was from like March of 2013 or something when this game got scheduled. And he posted that day, they're going to kick our ass. And he repo. He well, said, there I, it is, so, guys. Well, I was going to say, we, 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 we've said the same thing since the schedule first came out. Yeah. I know we said it uh, whenever we did our, our season preview thing. Like, I, we said, they're going to lose this football game. Yeah. yeah this was, yeah. to me, this was not a shocker. I, to me, the conversation about Muschi, I know you you still say no. I, I don't see how, man. I do not see how. Now, I'm not, to be fair, I'm saying no that it's going to I happen. I don't see any way that you can do this, man. You cannot bring this guy back for another year because you're, you've got a night game at Texas A&M and you've got Clemson coming to your place. Both of those don't feel like you are anywhere near not now. Ready to win one of those Not football now. games. Not even stay in them. No, no. Not and even so, stay in and them. And so when you look back at, at how they're going to finish, you drop those two games, you come into the house going one and five, and the only win you have is as uninspiring a win as anybody else in the country has the right. night of the Vanderbilt game. You basically, for lack of a better term, and I'll take a term from one of our local hosts here, you've sucked for the last six weeks. Right. You can't bring this guy back, man. It's not. No way. Well, look. No way. I, I, I don't even know. Here's my biggest problem. And I and I, I fans leaving. I mean, the stadium was empty. Sure. By the end of the game. Sure. Saturday night. Yeah. But, I, I just, but, but, but. When they quit showing up, then you got a big problem. Yeah, but they all still bought a ticket. So the question becomes. Well, they buy next year. That's right. And, and historically speaking, for South Carolina fans, yep. Yep. They will. And and the, the the thing is that I don't even know what the right thing to do is because, yes, you know. Yes, you do. No, I don't. Yes, because do. Because the man who hired this guy is going to hire the next guy. And all these people talking about Bob Caslin, whose job is in jeopardy himself because of the way he was hired. I don't want to get political on the show, but whatever you think about how Bob Caslin was hired, Henry McMaster interfered in that. It doesn't matter whether you think he should have or whether he should have the right. The Southern Association of Colleges and Schools is investigating that whole hiring right now. Do you really think that this president, who's in his first six months on the job, is going to fire Ray Tanner? No, Ray Tanner's not going anywhere. So if Ray Tanner's there, Ray Tanner's going to turn around and hire another head coach that's that's established in a Power 5 program, and if he can do that, it's probably someone who hasn't had much success. Okay, listen. 
here, here, here's what what you need to be pulling for. Okay, you've got this thing all wrong. You have got it completely backwards. You don't want Ray Tanner anywhere near this next coaching search, right? No. You are wrong. You want Ray Tanner to make this next hire because you know what happens when he screws up the next one? Then he'll be out of there. Well, he's going to be out of there anyway, though. He's going to retire. I mean, he's, uh, he's no, a, I'm just saying, man. Like, he's not for a while. He's going to, listen, he's going to get another job. He's going to get another chance to hire another coach. He's the, yeah, the AD, the AD, I, I'll give you, I'll give you one bad hire. Not going to give you two. They're going to give him a chance to fix it. It's just how fast do you, how, how quickly do you want Ray Tanner out of there? The quicker he hires another guy, and, and you know, let's say, you know, let's say he doesn't, he and doesn't right hire now, the right guy. The quicker he hires the next wrong guy, the faster he's out the door. And right now, and, and I still think, I think there's a chance our baseball team has a pretty decent season this year. And so that that hire ends up looking pretty good. But he is milking the success of all kinds of Eric Hyman hires right now. He didn't hire Don Staley. He didn't hire Frank Martin. He didn't hire the women's basketball. I mean, baseball, I'm, I'm sorry, soccer coach that just won the SEC mm. conference. He, and he's sort of getting credit for this stuff. Right. And, yes, he's paid for things. But, my God. Have you seen how much money South Carolina's athletic program makes? They, 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 you get one bad – as an AD, your major sport, you'll get one bad hire. But the people are not going to let you make two. But see, in my opinion, he shouldn't get but one bad hire when you're hiring somebody for the sport and you hire somebody that has already tried it at that exact level and failed miserably. And everybody in the country tells you, oh, please, God, don't okay, do that. But, he, but here's the other thing, though. You act like they plucked Will Muschamp off of a boot out of the middle of the Like, somebody else was going to hire Will Muschamp. Yeah. He was going to get another. You just happened to be the one to do it. Yeah, Hiring Will Muschamp was not well, this. Well, we're always it, the one that just well, happens yeah, to it, do it. it. Hiring him was not Brad this. Scott, Sparky Woods. Well, I, mean, I, I, I was six years old when that stuff was. I can't comment on that. But I'm saying – Will Muschamp was going to get another head coaching job. It was going to be at another big, probably another SEC school. I, okay, yeah, you missed. Okay, give him another chance to, you know, give him a chance to make it right. But if he, you know, if he goes out and he hires the wrong guy again, then he'll be out of there. Just how quick do you want him gone? That's it to me. That's it. That's it. And, and, and the thing is, I don't want him to go ugly, despite the fact that he hired this guy, despite the fact that um, he blocked me on Twitter for making a perfectly valid point. I mean, you know, yeah. like... You can talk about a lot of things, but pizza is not going to be one of them with Ray Tanner. It amazes me the stuff he is okay with people tweeting at him, but, but yeah, when I suggested he should have paid for that pizza and given that lady a tip, that, that was... Wow, you crossed the damn line on that one. I, I, I guess so. Um I don't see, though, this – my remedy early on in the season of they need to hire new coordinators. How do you get a decent offensive coordinator to come to Columbia right now and work for a coach that's probably in their last year? Well, uh, yeah. How do you, how, how do you, how do you talk somebody well, into I, that? I said, real, real quick before we, before we move on, the, there's one name that's going to be out there that just got fired from Arkansas with ties to this state. No, yeah. that, 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 there's no chance of that happening. I'm just saying. Okay, let me tell you, and I know you want to talk about North Carolina. That's fine. He's not going to burn that bridge with Dabo. Chad Morris is not. And why in the world would he come to South Carolina knowing that the staff he's going to come work for is probably on his on the way out no matter what you do? Look at the schedule next year, man. Oh, and by the way, who do I have to work with? Brian Edwards? No. Rico Dowdle, no. Tavian Feaster, no. I didn't no. say it was going to happen. I just said it's a no. Name you're out losing there. everything on this offense. Josh Van and Shy Smith. Jo- Shy Smith, who can't stay healthy. Josh Van, I'm who about can't done catch with a Shai football. Smith, man. I'm about done with that guy. And they both they both drop two thirds of the passes thrown at them. It doesn't help that Helensky throws the ball 102 miles an hour on an eight yard slant route. But if it hits you in the hands, you got to catch it. Uh, I tell you, one, one, one more point. 
Jake Bentley would have made that throw Saturday night. <laughs> but that's just that's just my You're opinion. You're out of your mind. Jake Bentley they both would have missed it. Jake Bentley would have nailed that throw. But you know what's funny about everybody making a big thing about that? It would have gotten called it back. It was anyway. called back. Yeah. It was a holding it flag. It wouldn't have mattered. But I'm just saying, Bentley makes that throw. No way in the world. Uh, BG, Thursday night, the Tar Heels. They did not play Saturday. Steven Garcia would have made that throw. Steven Garcia would have seen three Brian Edwards in the That's fine. He'd hit the one <laughs> in the middle. One of them. He'd hit the one in the middle. Uh, the Tar Heels did play Saturday. Uh, the last couple minutes of the show, I've got a, uh, a big question for you. That goes Thursday night at Pitt. Still sitting on four wins. The bowl game is just, you know, it's not quite there. But we can kind of start to feel it. We finished up with Pitt, Mercer, and NC State. So uh, you've got five. You're going to get five wins. We're going to get five wins. We've got to get one. Uh, I personally don't want to go into the NC State game, the rivalry game, even as bad as they've looked at times, especially once they've hit conference play. I don't want that to have to be because the I most think win. It doesn't right? always – it's not always the case in a rivalry game, but I think with you guys and them this year, that really is – That will that will be their national championship but I'm game. I'm just saying you can, you can forget the spread and everything in yes. that game. There's no yes. telling what goes down I, I don't want game. any part of that. So, to me, my opinion, that makes Thursday night – at Pitt, on the road, in a stadium that's going to be half full, if that. That is the biggest game for the North Mustard Carolina Palace. this year. Huh? The Mustard Palace. Is that that stupid old stadium that you used no, to No, 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 no. That's what everybody calls Hinesville, man. Really? Mustard Palace, yeah. I never heard that. There's nothing stupid about the old stadium. I'll not have that. you say that. I'm not talking about building another new one. But anyway, my point was, BG... Talk me off of it. This is the biggest game North Carolina no. plays this year. This is the biggest game that they've played since the ACC title game with Mitch Tur- with Marquise Williams, with Mitch Trubisky sitting on the sideline. This is the biggest game. That, that, that might be of a little bit of an overstatement, but I'll put it this way. At this point in your season, with the games you've won and the games you've lost, the shine's worn off, even though some of your North Carolina buddies online really get angry when he did you not, say They did not like that. Yeah, they did not. Yeah, well, I was um, right. Of course you I was were right. right. Otherwise, you wouldn't have said it. Now, right. That's what Thank we do. you. That's what we do on this show. Thank you. We say things that are correct, um, except when we don't, but that's neither here nor there. Um, Very few and far between. The Raiders still might win a Super Bowl. I mean, you never know. I mean, you know, it's – it's uh, Jeff, Bezo, Jeff Bezos might buy the Redskins. I really doubt it, but, you know, you never know. No. Um, anyway, uh, no, at this point in the season, this is huge for you guys because – you need to get that that taste of winning back in your mouth, right? You want to put together a two-game win streak here. You go into that NC, NC State game having won two more games and the bowl's already in your pocket and you don't have to worry about that. You go out there and have fun. Right. Go out there and have fun. Um, you don't want – I'll say this. There's obviously a chance here that you finish the season with five wins. And that would be bad. The way this season started, because it's a different thing if you had lost the first four or five games and had finished strong. Well, we've talked about that in the NFL. I right? think it's a different. I think it's different. You know, if we had lost the first two and won the next two instead of the opposite, like that. Right. The fact that we went two and zero. Right. And here we are. We're still sitting here. It's you know the second week of November, and we are still two games short. Of hitting that magical six win number, and you've lost so many so close many games, man. Games. It's insane. Yeah, and you know, I, the way you you look back at the way we lost the Clemson game, the way we lost the six overtime game with Virginia Tech, you know, the second half against Virginia where you just could not get a stop and get off the field. Like, I, you know, it's just, man, this, this is it. Like, we're gonna do it. Like Thursday night to me has to be it. This game is so huge, much much bigger than. Probably safe to say any North Carolina Pittsburgh game in the history of the two schools yeah. facing each other. Sure, this is the biggest matchup they've ever had. Well, I, I would, it's I would humongous. back, I would back you on that. <laughs> There's never been a matchup this, bigger than this one. This is the biggest North Carolina Pittsburgh football game in series history. Yeah, I'll give you that one. But no, but you are right, and I mean Matt Brown's trying to establish a narrative, and he doesn't need to win. He doesn't need to win a ton of games. He needs to win six. He wants that extra bowl practice. He, although, really, he's not even that worried about the guys that are on this team, man. He's trying to bring in this talent. But you want to make the pitch to recruits that we are building something. 2021. 
Watch out for us. But I'm just saying, you lose a little bit of that momentum if you lose two out of these last three games. No, no. You you, you got to get to six. We said to start the year, six was possible. It's you know it's been it, it's basically slipped through your grasp up to this point. You got to get six. Still a chance though that you win all three of them. Well, wouldn't that be sweet? That's not a com- seven-win season. That's not out of the eight realm for a of possibility bowl game. at all. Wow, wow. 